What is King Magnifico's backstory? I mean, long before Magnifico unleashed forbidden magic, brought the kingdom of Rosas to its knees and transformed into a true Disney villain, where did he come from? What motivated him to build the kingdom and to study magic? And why was he driven to become a villain? I'm going to break down all these questions and more as we break down all of the hidden complexities behind the vain, ruthless, and powerful King Magnifico. Now, to be honest, I originally saw Magnifico as a very simple Disney villain. He's not the most threatening villain we've ever seen or the most intelligent or the most fascinating to watch, but he does forge an identity for himself as a charismatic and tragic figure who I believe could have been explored in an even deeper way because the pieces of his backstory form a very compelling tale. You see, at the beginning of Magnifico's life, he was raised within a loving family on a small farm. According to the Art of Wish, which I've linked down below for you if you'd like to check it out for yourself, Magnifico had a good, simple life on the Iberian Peninsula, which is modern-day Spain and Portugal. But everything changed when selfish thieves arrived at his family's doorstep. On that day, those people burned all of their land, they murdered Magnifico's mother, father, and sister, and they completely destroyed the life Magnifico knew. He was devastated by this tragedy, and from that day on, he swore that he would never be powerless again. And I think this is what defined the rest of Magnifico's life. You see, Magnifico's whole journey to regain control over his life using magic began because of this tragedy. He was traumatized and burdened by the suffering that he went through, and all of the darkness that grew within him came from the pain he experienced when he lost everything he loved. He was driven by fear because he wanted to avoid this devastating outcome from happening again through any means necessary. Now, originally, Magnifico was dreamed up as an astrologist and an alchemist. Instead of the grand sorcerer, he furiously studied to become. But some of those ideas remained with him. He was shown to have researched the stars. He explored how to combine elements to develop potions, and he often surrounded himself with the signs of the zodiac and alchemical symbols. Now, through all this research, Magnifico eventually came to see that he was created like all living creatures from stars. And honestly, this makes me wonder if stars are actually the true source of magic in this world. I mean, we were shown that within every human, animal, and plant, there was a glowing energy within their hearts that could be used to combat any spell or curse. So while Magnifico grew to become a powerful wielder of magic, I think he must have known that everyone had the same potential within them if they committed themselves to the path like he did. Now, throughout most of Magnifico's time as a sorcerer, the magic that he used was described in the Art of Wish as being illusion magic. For the most part, it was only meant to awe and dazzle and was characterized by the color blue. Inevitably, he would use a much more ancient and destructive type of magic that was green, but that wouldn't be discovered until later on in his life. Now, the only way he was able to learn about magic as much as he did, though, was because he collected every document on magic that he could find. And that eventually led him to collecting over a thousand spell books. But the topic that fascinated him the most was the idea of wishes. You see, Magnifico came to believe that there was nothing more important than a wish because they are what drive a person's heart. They make people who they are and he wanted to help people preserve those dreams because he knew how easily they could be destroyed. And that led him to a life-changing discovery. You see, eventually Magnifico learned of a way for people to share their deepest wishes with him. He came to understand how he could confine a wish into an individual bubble, while the wisher themselves would forget their heart's deepest desire. And once he had the freedom to see someone's wish, he realized that he could use his magic to grant them. And he continued this practice even after he became king. Prior to founding his kingdom, though, Magnifico met, fell in love with, and married a wise and powerful woman named Amaya. You see, they had a shared, hopeful desire to create a prosperous city together, and they brought that dream into reality. After searching for a place where they could create a home of their own, where they could offer Magnifico's magic to the world, inevitably, Magnifico and Amaya settled on a beautiful island in the Mediterranean Sea, and this is where they established the kingdom of Rosas. Now, according to the novel Disney Wish, A Recipe for Adventure, from that day on, Amaya's one wish was to serve Rosas, but Magnifico interpreted her desire differently. He believed that her wish was to serve him, which reveals that Magnifico saw Rosas as an extension of himself, which 
I think makes sense. When Magnifico's family and his childhood home were destroyed, he must have felt completely vulnerable and frightened. So as he built Rosas, he obsessed over being in control of the new kingdom so that he could feel safe. He was prepared to take any action necessary to protect the citizens of Rosas, for he never wanted someone to have their dreams destroyed before their eyes. But deep within his heart, the scarred child within him also was desperate to protect himself. The truth is, though, that Magnifico and Amaya weren't the first people to establish a city on that island. You see, in The Art of Wish, we're told that the castle that Magnifico and Amaya inhabit was built long before they were even born. But when they took over, they customized it, renovated it, and made it their own. Specifically, they added the 12-sided cone on top of the castle, which allowed Magnifico to transform the highest room into his library, lab, and observatory. And it was through that transformation that Magnifico discovered the ancient secret lair within the tower. And it was within that room where he found the Book of Forbidden Magic. Now, this book was specifically designed to look aged, tarnished, and damaged because it's meant to be an old text. What this means is that long ago, Magnifico's castle was used by someone who studied the dark forces that existed within the world. Through the depictions of dragons across the book, which pays homage to the dragon Maleficent became and the Evil Queen spellbook, at some point in the past, there must have been many dark and mythical forces across the land. Which makes sense. You see, in Wish's art book in Disney 23 magazine, we are told that Wish is meant to be the first of Disney's fairy tales. It's intended to take place with in the medieval era. But of course, there are many stories by Disney from before this time period which feature gods, heroes, mythical monsters, potions, and mystical items from across the world. And it seems that throughout these time periods, there was also magic that was being studied that was tied to ancient, demonic, and indescribably evil forces. And that's what Magnifico unearthed within his castle. But for the longest time, Magnifico resisted the temptation of the forbidden magic, thanks to the support of Amaya. And this was a very wise decision. You see, Magnifico knew nothing of the kind of magic that existed within that book. While forbidden magic was an unholy force that was described as being capable of sucking the life out of everything it touches, it came with a massive price. It was said that if someone embraced forbidden magic even once, they would be committed to that path for eternity. It was a force that was completely beyond Magnifico's control. For many years though, instead of unleashing the ancient book's power, Magnifico created a protection spell around it to ensure no one could access its forbidden magic. But as he continued to build Rosas, it remained in his mind as a possible avenue to ensure his kingdom would remain under his control if anything went wrong. Now, while King Magnifico and Queen Amaya weren't certain if people would want Magnifico's gifts when they came to power, the truth was people from around the world flocked to the kingdom in hopes of having their wishes come true. There were families and individuals from Europe, Northern Africa, and the Middle East who all came to this new paradise, and the city quickly thrived. The Kingdom of Wishes seemed like a utopia. There were no wars or famine or diseases. The young and old lived long and happy lives, and Rosas thrived as a hub for art and innovation. The city continued to grow and expand. Everyone who came to Rosas believed in the promise that Magnifico made to them, and the people were grateful for their king. You see, all citizens over the age of 18 were able to give their wish to King Magnifico, and it was sold to them as a way to alleviate the burden of carrying impossible dreams within themselves. Instead of worrying about their future, they put their lives within Magnifico's hands with the assurance that their wishes would be protected. And if they were lucky, they would even come true. Each month, King Magnifico would even put on a spectacle known as the Wish Ceremony. Not only did this event continue to inspire hope within the people of Rosas, but it was also a consistent way for Magnifico to dazzle, charm, and connect with his subjects using his magic. And over time, the people of Rosas grew to love King Magnifico. They trusted him, they believed in him, and they were willing to do anything for him and his kingdom. But behind the perfect exterior, there were cracks within Rosas. You see, the truth was that Magnifico did everything he could to create the impression of control. From his neat and polished study to his massive stone walls and towers, Magnifico was constantly attempting to portray himself as an authority figure who had influence over every aspect of his city. He even monopolized the use of magic when he made magic forbidden, except for 
himself. Even his cape that depicts the night sky was meant to showcase his belief that he had become capable of controlling the universe. But what Magnifico actually had the most control over was what wishes he chose to grant. You see, by possessing every citizen's deepest desires, he was able to understand every person at a fundamental level. He could see who people wanted to become, how capable they truly were, and in what ways they could change the kingdom. Of course, it seems like Magnifico originally did this to make sure there were no criminals, ne'er-do-wells, or villains receiving his magic, but he was even more selective than that. It wasn't enough for someone to be good-natured. If a person's wish was too vague, uncontrollable, or potentially threatening to Magnifico's rule in any way, he refused to grant that wish. And once he decided that person's desire was potentially dangerous, of course he wasn't going to give the wish back. He would never unleash an individual's wish if it could possibly possibly harm the kingdom? Why would he provide that freedom to someone when he believed he could completely avoid any negative outcomes by keeping the wish for himself? And honestly, while I do think this decision in part came from a longing for self-preservation, I don't think he took on this task lightly. Magnifico seemed burdened by the responsibility that he carried as the grantor of wishes and as the leader of Rosas. And I think that makes sense. Magnifico was the one who made his wish come true. He studied magic, built a kingdom, and he kept every citizen and their wish safe. So how could anyone still be unsatisfied? After so many years of pain, hardship, and sacrifice, I think Magnifico eventually grew resentful and felt threatened by anyone who questioned him. He longed to be viewed as a king who was prepared for any situation, but under the surface, he was just insecure, angry, and chaotic. So when a young girl made a wish and welcomed a star to Rosas, inevitably, Magnifico would unravel his life in an attempt to keep the kingdom under his control. But now I'd like to turn the conversation over to you. What do you think of King Magnifico as the newest Disney villain? Let me know in the comments. Thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. And of course, if you'd like to see more Wish videos like this one, subscribe for more. Finally, I'm Isaac Carlson. Thanks for watching and have a magical day.